Greetings, weary wanderer, and welcome back to Lonely TTRPG, the solo actual play and review podcast. This week we are playing Ghost Box by Marks Shepherd. There is a post box in the woods near your house. It is very old, maybe a hundred years or more. The paint is flaking, there's rust in places, but you think this post is still collected there because they close post boxes that aren't used, don't they? And it is still used. People keep putting their letters in there. Lovers, spies, friends, humans. They still post their postcards and birthday cards and driving licenses and passports. The odd person might wonder why something doesn't get there on time. But unless everybody realizes, nobody guesses. This post box is abandoned. Ghost Box is a solo epistolary game about letters left moldering in an abandoned post box for weeks, months, years. You'll write one side of a conversation where the replies never come. You'll track what happens to the post box over the years. And when the game ends, the post and its contents are lost forever. So diving on into gameplay, what you're going to need is you're going to need a deck of cards. You're going to need some letters or something to write with. And you're going to need a little bit of time. Now, remember, this is a solo game, so you're in control of your own safety from moment to moment. Skip any prompts you don't want to engage with. Drop any suits you feel uncomfortable with. Stop playing and walk away if it feels like it's too much. Playing the game. So Ghostbox is a narrative layer built on the top of the solitaire game Osmosis, which is known as Treasure Trove. If you already know this game, the only difference is that in this version, you can play through the deck as many times as you want, as opposed to being limited to three. If you don't know the game, we're going to go through that in just a second. When you set up, feel free to choose which card from the exposed cards on the top of each stash to play as the first card in the top row. You'll be writing the most letters or fragments from this sender. So diving on into osmosis, what you're going to do is you're going to shuffle your deck and then you're going to deal three cards face down with one card face up in two to four rows. And those are going to be called your stashes. Next, you're going to turn over the first remaining card and place it immediately in the top right row of the top stash. And that becomes your first row. Now, the way it works is whatever card is in your row, whatever suit is in your row is the only suit you can play in that row. Now, the order of cards doesn't matter. So you can go ace, three, two, king, jack, ten, nine. That doesn't matter. But in order to start a new row, the card that you want to put in the new row has to exist in the row above it. So if you have ace, two, four, five in your top row, your second row can only contain an ace, two, four, or five of whatever the new suit is. Now, once you have your stash and row set up, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to deal three cards from your deck and that becomes your hand. Now, like normal solitaire rules with your hand, the top card has to be played first. So if you can't play the top card, you can't play any of the cards under it. That entire hand goes into the discard pile. And of course, if you remove a card from your stash and place it in your row, then reveal the next card. So again, that's going to be the basic setup for this. You're going to deal two to four stashes. You're going to set up your first row, and then you're going to deal your hand. And you're going to move your cards from your stash or your hand to the row. Now, whenever a card goes from a stash into a row, write a letter or fragment using a prompt from that card which are listed by suit and in rank after these rules. The value of the previous card in the row is how many days, weeks, months, or years it has been since the last letter from that sender was posted. Each sender tells you what time scale to use. If you want to, you can also write letters or fragments whenever a card is played into a row from your hand or the discard pile. And of course, you may always skip a prompt for whatever reason. However you play your card, use the prompt to guide the content of what you write. There is a text and subtext in each prompt, with the subtext dealing with the deeper emotional context. Use or ignore either as you wish. 
for a full letter, address what you write to your subject and sign it from the sender themselves. Remember that the date moves on by as many days, weeks, months, or years as the previous card in that row. Sometimes the letter in the post box gets damaged by whatever is gradually making it unusable so that a fragment is all that is left. So if you like, just write a few lines for a prompt. Don't feel beholden to writing a full letter each time. Dilapidation. Whenever you have turned over all hands in the deck, then something has happened to make the post box harder to use. Count the number of cards in the top row and look for that change prompt in the list. Then respond to that prompt aloud. After this, turn over the discard pile and start drawing hands again. Ending the game. When you go through the whole deck without being able to play new cards, the game is over. When the game ends, the post box becomes entirely unusable. What happens to it? Speaking aloud, narrate a short scene showing its final state. The Senders. Each of the four suits in the deck represents a different type of letter lost in the post box from a different sender. Like a series of letters in a museum, only one side of the conversation is presented. You can choose which senders you like to play based on how you feel, what they might deal with, and how much time you have. You need to at least pick two senders for the game to work. Each description of the sender gives you its suit, its name, some themes and ideas, the timescale of the letters what troubling content you might encounter, and an idea of the emotional overtones of the letters. It also gives you three questions to answer before you start playing. When you do start playing, decide which two or more of these senders you'll explore. Take out the other suits. Remember, jokers are optional. Using the jokers, it's an optional rule. It helps out with the actual game, makes it a little bit easier to win. We will not be using jokers in this playthrough. Also remember, removing senders means that there are fewer letters that you must write, but that you are more likely to have to write them. The rank of the card within the suit gives you two things, the prompt for the letter and how long it's been since the last letter from the sender. Number cards equal their value. Face cards are Jack 11, Queen 12, King 13. Now, as for your senders, you have hearts, which is the forlorn. A lovelorn writer over many weeks or even months, these love letters are written, sent, never received, never read. They might deal with relationships, sexuality, rejection, jealousy, infidelity, obsession, coercive control, and other forms of abuse. They may be very sad and empty. Spades are the sleeping, penned by an agent given a purpose never realized. These are the reports and missives to a handler who has assumed the writer lost. They are sent over many months or even years. They might deal with surveillance, police, military, trust, betrayal, deceit, blackmail, torture, interrogation, warfare, and other forms of state violence. They may also be very cold and calculating. Clubs are the left behind, written with love from one friend to another who has perhaps forgotten them or assumed they have been forgotten. They are sent over many years. They might deal with the life of events of all kinds and potentially intensively and deeply. These series of letters is more open to your own ideas. These letters might be warm and tender. Diamonds are the opportune, prepared hastily, but with good intentions. These are from any number of chance passerby and are postcards, thank you notes, and cards of all occasions. Birthdays, weddings, funerals, graduations, driving tests, get well soon, invitations, and so on. There is no time scale to these letters. They come as they are. They deal with life events in a shallow but tangible way. These letters might be funny and touching. So for today, we're going to be dealing with the sleeping and the opportune. So once again, the sleeping is penned by an agent given a purpose never realized. When you choose the sender, answer, who is the sender? Where have they been sent? What was their mission? And for the opportune, when you choose this answer, where was this post box? Why is it not more used? Who gets the opportunity to use it? But we're not going to answer those questions. Instead, we're going to dive right on in. So the first card I got starting off my first row is going to be the Jack of Diamonds. So the Jack of Diamonds, a raunchy seaside postcard. Why is it inappropriate? So this is going to be a postcard from a a seaside pier and 
It's going to be one of those tourist piers. Think like Pier 39 over in San Francisco. But a little off the beaten track where they can get away with putting things on their postcard like give her the crabs that she'll enjoy. Now, in my stash, I have a five of diamonds and a three of spades. So I only have diamonds out on the board. Or I only have a row of diamonds up front. My three cannot be played yet. So we're going to go ahead and play that five of diamonds. Again, diamonds are time immaterial, so the timing doesn't matter. With a five, we have a shocking letter to an angry ant. What confessions are held within? So I think that this letter is, this letter is definitely a confession. And it is a confession of, it is a confession of, sorrow and remorse as the sender never meant to abandon the aunt and her child and his child actually that that what happened so many years ago was not was not what meant to happen and that they couldn't jeopardize their life with the aunt's sister but this is all coming from this is all coming from the father's other child so the aunt's the aunt's nephew is writing this talking about his father and what everybody has learned about the relationship between his father and the aunt and the cousin who's actually a half sibling to them and just how messed up of a situation this all was. And of course, you know, mom, the aunt's sister, like she doesn't, she doesn't want much to do with the family now at this point, obviously, but given time, given time, maybe, maybe something can come of it, but that's going to be that letter. And we're going to move on to our next one. Now I have an ace of spades and a three of spades out in my stashes. I cannot play either of those into a new row because my first row again is jack five. So I need either a diamond or a jack or five. So I'm going to have to deal my first hand. And top card for my hand is a three of diamonds. So I can play that into the stash. Now it is optional whether or not I do a prompt for anything played from the hand. We're not going to do that. However, that does allow us to play our three of spades from our second stash into our second row, kicking off a spades row. And the three of spades is going to be, you find someone between you and the target who is in the way. It was supposed to be a simple mission in a nice clean shot. Get out. Nobody was expecting their wife to be there. Now, normally that wouldn't be an issue. After all, after all, she knew what type of bastard she had married. But the issue was how very pregnant she was. And despite the threat that this person poses that child that child deserves a chance to see their father for who he was and to be better and so and so we had to scrub the mission okay so moving on i have a nine of diamonds which is the only thing i can play now because again i can't add to my spades unless they exist in the top row and any of the spades I have out do not exist in the top row. So we're playing the nine of diamonds and that's going to be a graduation card. How do you commiserate with them on their poor grade? So this is going to be, this is going to be from a, it's going to be from a family member to the graduate. And it's going to say, Congratulations, honey, on the graduation. We were pleasantly surprised to receive the notice. Luckily, state colleges 
do not put much stock in GPAs, I'm sure that you will be able to live a happy life, love passive aggressive family members. And these diamonds are supposed to be fun. That's why I chose them. This is getting this <laughs> next card we have is we have the queen of diamonds. And this is also coming from our stash. So for the queen of diamonds, a letter to your daughter. What makes this so heartfelt? Not doing that one. I'm going to straight up skip that one. I have a daughter and this game has surprisingly been putting me in a lot weirder mood than I thought. I'm not, I'm not doing anything involving my daughter. So exercising safety rule number one. Now with that in my stash, I have an ace and four of spades. I cannot play any of those in my hand. I have an eight and six of spades. Cannot play any of those. So I'm going to start my discard pile and deal a new hand. Now the bright side is the hand I dealt was all diamonds. So that can all just go on the list, which allows one of them was a six of diamonds. that allows me to pull the six of diamonds off my discard pile, put it into row two, but it does not help me progress the game. So let's deal a new hand, two of spades, queen of spades, ace of diamonds. So ace of diamonds is gonna go up in row one. I'm gonna go ahead and put the queen of spades in row two. Two of spades can't do anything with, but I can move my ace of spades from my stash row two. But that also means that I need to do the ace of spades prompt. And this will be one month later. So this will be one month after the failed hit. You know no reply is coming. Why are you determined to carry on your mission regardless? It's been one month since my last mission report. I don't know if it's because you guys are disappointed in me. I don't know if it's because you haven't quite figured out what to do. But I'm still out. I am a professional and I am still out here and I'm going to continue to do the job that I swore to do. If you have any more information, if you have any more missions or guidance, you know how to reach me. Otherwise, I'm going to continue mission with the last guidance and intent that I was given. Okay, next up, we're going to move a eight of diamonds from our stash into row one. That's going to be an envelope containing only money. An envelope containing only money. That's it's not really much of a prompt to go off with that one. I know it says who sent it, but like any envelope containing only money, that's not going to have anybody's name on it. You know, that's the type of thing that you just drop in there and it, it kind of takes care of itself. Whoever was supposed to get it should have got it. But with that eight of diamonds, I can move my eight of spades from discard to my row. But I cannot play my two of spades from my hand. So I got to move my two of spades to discard. I have a ten of spades and a four of spades still in my stash, which means I need to deal a new hand. And I can play a couple cards from my hand. I got a five and seven of spades. They match my five and seven of diamonds in my first row. Same thing with my jack of spades. All right, here we go. Next hand, I got myself a four of diamonds. So I can play that four of diamonds, which is going to allow me to play my four of spades from my stash, which is going to be another letter. Four months later, your safe house has been compromised. This is going to be one of the last letters you receive from me for a while. The safe house has been compromised. I can no longer stay here. I need to find a I need to find a new location to hole up. I need to reestablish myself. We I'm going to be going under radio silence for a bit, at least until at least until I get everything re reassembled. All right, so looking at my last hand, I got a 10 of diamonds, which lets me place my final 10 of spades from my stash and giving me my final prompt. You follow a rule contrary to your best interest. Why are you upholding the system? And we're going to skip that one as well, because that doesn't feel like a good ending, ending prompt. 
but that that is Ghost Box by Marks Shepard. This game was a lot different than what I was expecting when I saw Marks advertising this months ago. I was super excited. I was like, oh, a letter writing game that I can do by myself. How fun, because I have no friends, so I have no one to write letters to. And that's also not a cry for attention. I wouldn't write letters if I had friends. I'm very poor at the maintaining social relationships. So, like, this was looking like it was right up my alley. And I was definitely expecting something a little more lighthearted now don't get me wrong i like this this is a this is a very this is a very good game but yeah there was a lot more there was a lot more opportunity for darkness you know i i ended up hitting a lot of dark notes in the opportune which i chose that one because it was supposed to be the happy one i didn't actually read through the prompts when i when i did it when i chose it but like that was supposed to be the happy one, but no, it was still, it was still good. It was so good. I, I probably should have gone with my gut and gone with the forlorn, the lovers one, but you know, live, learn. Like I said, fun game. Definitely, definitely enjoyed it. Definitely a, I liked the, I liked the add on to basically playing a game of solitaire. You know, as you saw playing, playing only two suits makes the game really short. You know, had I, had I realized that at the time, I probably would have played three suits, but ultimately it's fine. You know, I just wanted to give you guys an idea of what the game looked like. And it does look like a fun game. Really my biggest complaint is that the rules for osmosis are not included with the game PDF. Now. They do include the rules for osmosis on their itch page. It is included on their itch page. You just have to scroll down because it's not with the downloads for the game. That's really my biggest complaint right there is not that they base it off another game or that it's, you know, it's a hack or whatever, a hack of another game or whatever you want to call it, you know, because I mean, hell I've done that with some of the games that I've, some of the games that I've made, you know, Doors and Sconces is a hack of the Breathless system, but include the rules with the game. That's my big thing. But again, that's my, that's my biggest complaint. The rules were present on the page. You just had to go look for them. Another super nice thing they had is they had the, they had a file so that you could set this up on a virtual board. With links to that as well, I did not do that because I did not want to sign up for yet another yet another site that's just going to do nothing but send me emails. But but that is an option there for you, especially if you don't have especially if you don't have a deck of cards on you or something like that. You know, you can you can get this file, you can load it up in there and you know play online. But as for the gameplay itself, like I said fun unique unique i did like the i did like the building on a solitaire game rule set again i played rules as written but for y'all don't don't play with don't don't play with only two two suits play with all four suits that way you have a reason and an opportunity to run through your entire deck to redo your discard pile so that so that you get the dilapidation so that you get all of the other things for the game two two suits is not enough to really build on the game the way that i think that the author intended it's fun it's fine it's doable it allows you to play a game fairly quickly but if you're gonna play play with all four suits if you need to take a break just take a break it's fine it's fine it's gonna be fine even if you don't finish the game, it's fine. Just start over again next time. Because, again, at the end of the day, solo games, your rules, do what you need to do. But super fun game. Definitely worth checking out. Now, you can find Ghost Box on Itch for $7 at marks-of-i.com. 
high-water.itch.io slash ghostbox, or you can check out the link down below. If you decide that you want to go check it out and you want to pick up this game, make sure that you tell them that Steel Stash sent you. But until next time, remember, I must ask y'all to stay awesome. You have been listening to a Black Dragon Dungeon Company production. If you want to help support us, please like, comment, subscribe, rate us, share us with friends, all the typical social media stuff. You can also check out our Patreon listed down below. If you're not in the position or the mood to provide a monthly subscription, then you can also check out some of our games over on Itch or Drive Through RPG. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time.